do another example here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So example number two, we want to find the area of the paraboloid. Find the area of the paraboloid. Z equals x squared plus y squared. So now it's given, uh, this paraboloid is not given to us in parameterized form. It's given to us in just a straight Cartesian fashion. Z equals some function of x and y. For z greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to 5. OK. So we're trying to find the area of, so we have this paraboloid. And z is bigger than, greater than or equal to 0. So it's obviously, it's going to be above the um, xy plane and up to a length, up to a height of 5. So we want the surface area of that paraboloid. OK, um, real quickly before I get into this problem, I want to talk about the notion of length, area, and volume. <clears throat> OK, um, length is, you know what length is. Uh, it's just, you know, and there is a physical way of actually measuring length. So if I said, what is the length of some curve? Well, what you can do is you can take a string, you can run it along the curve, you know, make sure it's there, and then pull the string taut, and then you can measure the length of that string. So there is a physical um, representation, a physical manifestation of length. As far as volume is concerned, if you want needed to measure the volume of some strange looking object, what you do is you get a tub of water, you measure, you know, the height uh, you measure how much w you read off the graduation. Um, and then what you do is you insert this object into the water until it's just you know, under the surface. And of course, the water level is going to rise. Well, the difference in water level gives you the volume of the object. Unfortunately, for area, for surface area, there is no physical manifestation. So in some sense, area is a very, very odd thing. Length we can deal with physically. Volume we can deal with physically. Area, we can't really deal with physically. Area is strictly a mathematical notion. Um, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. It's very, very uh, curious that that's the case. OK, so let's go ahead and finish this problem. So we're given our uh, equation that way. So let's go ahead and do our parameterization. So our parameterization, when we're given z equals f of x and y, well, it's equal to x and y, and the function itself, x squared plus y squared. So this is our parameterization. Coordinate function 1, number 2, and number 3. OK, so let's find dp dx. So this is going to be a vector. This is going to be 1, 0, and 2x. I'm just differentiating this. And let's go ahead and find dp dy. So dp dy, that's going to equal 0, 1, and 2y. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we need to find the cross product of these two vectors. So dp dx cross dp dy. And we're going to go ahead and use our ijk symbolism. We have 1, 0, 2x. And we have 0, 1, and 2y. And when you expand this determinant, you're going to end up with the following. You're going to end up with minus 2x minus 2y and 1. Now in this particular case, I ended up choosing the opposite orientation. In this case, I ended up choosing um, such that this normal vector, this is the normal vector, is actually pointing into the paraboloid as opposed to out of it. It's not really going to be a problem because when we take the norm of this, the norm is the same, whether it's pointing in or pointing out. But it just so happens that I notice that I have the incorrect orientation. Later, that might be a problem, but for right now, it's not. And we'll deal with it when we, when we get to it. OK, so this is our vector. Now we need the norm of this vector. So <clears throat> the norm of dp dx cross dp dy equals the norm of this. Well, it equals 4x squared 
plus 4y squared plus 1 under the radical. So our differential area element that we're going to integrate, ds, is equal to the radical 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 1 dy dx. That's what we're going to integrate. Now, for Now for z equals x squared plus y squared, we said that we wanted z less than or equal to 5. So x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 5. Well, if that's 5, then the disk that we're looking at, this length right here, is actually going to end up being radical 5. And this length right here is going to be radical 5. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be integrating this is x and this is y. The z-axis is going like this. <clears throat> we're integrating over a region of the xy plane, right? dy dx. So we need to know what x goes from and we need to know what y goes from. In this particular case, z equals x squared plus y squared is less than 5. Well, that means this circle is in the xy plane. That's this way. And of course, the paraboloid is going up this way. Well, if z itself is 5, well, then this radius, our circle underneath, has a radius of radical 5, simply based on the parameterization, x squared plus y squared. OK, I hope that that makes sense. So in this particular case, our x is going to run from negative radical 5 all the way to positive radical 5. It's going to go from this point to this point. <coughs> Excuse me. And our y value is going to go from our y. The height is going to change. So y is going to run from negative 5 minus x squared all the way to radical 5 minus x squared. And that comes from, if I move this x squared over here, and if I take the square root, I get y explicitly in terms of x. Because remember, again, <coughs> excuse me, I'm integrating with respect to y, and I'm integrating with respect to x. So I have to know what x does and what y does. So my area integral ends up being as follows. Area equals the integral from minus rad 5 to rad 5. <coughs> Excuse me. The integral minus 5 minus x squared under the radical to radical 5 minus x squared under the radical. And of course, I have my function, the norm of the cross product, which was 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 1 under the radical dy dx, because this is y and this is x. So I'm integrating that first. When I put this into my mathematical software, I get the number 49.864. There we go. That's the surface area of the paraboloid that has a height of 5. OK. Now, we did this in Cartesian coordinates. Let's go ahead and actually